The Little Freak was really an effort to put tons of processing inside of one box. And if you look at the front panel, obviously there's a lot of controls on there. And the idea was uh, often engineers will daisy chain, you'll, you'll EQ going in, you'll EQ coming out, you go from one EQ to the other to get one feature that the first EQ didn't have or vice versa. So the Little Freak was really an effort to put ton to processing, but at the same time, we wanted to make it easy to use and recallable uh, for mastering folks. The other element in the Little Freak that separates it from a lot of other EQs is the DS section, which is a, not only a DSer, but also a high frequency limiter. And they, they operate slightly differently, but essentially the DSer looks for contrast between high frequencies and your B frequencies, whereas a high frequency limiter is strictly like a knee compressor on the high frequencies only. The punch in the Little Freak is really probably just the speed of it. Uh, it's very, very fast, and as a result, it doesn't have any trouble, whether you're boosting or cutting, of handling the front edge of a transient. But also, we give you, for instance, there's little coloring elements that are pretty subtle. In the high pass section, where we give you eight selections, they all have a little bump right before they drop off. And that is something that I've always thought was magic. It basically keeps it from getting thin because there's a fraction of a dB hump right before the, the dive. And the dive, once you do that little hump, the dive is actually quicker. So the cutoff point is much quicker below the actual frequency because there's a little resonant point, which is that little bump.